Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed on the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Brooke Brown, your spiritual impact trainer. We come here Monday through Friday for a word so we can grow, change, progress, and be impacted by the word so we can impact the world. So we're going to go straight into the word of God today. Get your pen, paper, your highlighter, get a Bible, get whatever it is you need to take notes, write down the scriptures and anything that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind so you can go back and do your own study after we've done ours. Today, um, we are talking about Mind Your Business. The title is Mind Your Business, and we are starting off um, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. We're going to open up in prayer, and our praise scripture for today is Isaiah 25 and 1. That is our praise scripture. Isaiah 25 and 1 says, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and true. And so I encourage you to memorize the praise scripture for today. Go back and meditate on it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now giving you praise and glory and honor. We lift you up because you are God. We exalt you and we praise your name because you have done wonderful things. And so, Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray your Holy Spirit will take over and be our teacher, that you would pour into us individually and collectively, that your word would change us, transform us, renew our minds, guide our steps, direct our path. And so we yield to you even now. And we ask that you would take over, have your way. And Father, in everything, we give you praise and glory and honor. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. And we say hallelujah and amen. To God be the glory. Turn your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Our focus is verse 11, but I'm going to go ahead and read verses 6 through 12. We're reading verses 6 through 12. The focus is verse 11. The title of the message again is Mind Your Business. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as we look in verse 6, it says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how we ought to follow, how you ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power but to make ourselves an example or an ensemble unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Now here we are. This is what we're looking at right here in not being a busybody, but minding our own business. As Paul is speaking here, he's telling them, um, listen, listen. We're commanding you, instructing you, right? In the name of our Lord Jesus, that you would draw yourself from those that walk disorderly, those that are out of order, those that are not following instructions. But it says, not after the tradition which he received of us. So those that are not following instructions, walking in order, being disciplined. He's saying for, you know that you ought to follow us for we didn't behave disorderly among you. He's saying we didn't eat anybody's bread for nothing. He says we worked, right? That we wouldn't be chargeable, that we wouldn't owe anything. And so he's saying, listen, Basically, he's saying if somebody doesn't work or he says if someone doesn't work, they shouldn't eat. But here is the focus, right? We hear that there are some that walk disorderly among you, 
right? That is not working. They're not working. They're not doing anything. They're just being busybodies. I want to look at this in the, in the Amplified because today we are talking about um, this word busybodies, right? This word busybody and um, in the Greek, this word in the Greek for busybody is spelled, I'm going to spell it for you, P-E-R-I-E-R-G-A-Z-O-M-A-I. Again, I'm going to spell it for you. Remember, this is a video. You can always pause it and go back. But it's spelled P-E-R-I-E-R-G-A-Z-O-M-A-I. -E -E it means to waste one one's labor about a thing. It means to be a busybody. It means to um, meddle, going beyond proper boundaries where a person doesn't belong. To fixate on what others are doing instead of doing what the person himself is supposed to do. So, again, this is about going beyond the boundaries, beyond our boundaries. This is getting in somebody else's business. This is fixating and focusing on what somebody else should be doing instead of looking at what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And so we need to mind our own business. We need to focus on what it is that we're supposed to be doing. When we look at these verses of scripture we just read and look in the Amplified, it says in verse 6, Now we command you, believers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by his authority, that you withdraw and keep away from every brother or sister who leads an undisciplined life and does not live in accordance with, with the tradition and teaching that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how we, I'm sorry, how you ought to follow our example because we did not act in an undisciplined or inappropriate manner when we were with you. We were never idle or lazy, nor did we avoid our duties, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with labor and hardship, we worked night and day to pay our own way so that we would not be a financial burden on any of you for your support. Not because we do not have a right to such support, but we provided our own financial support to offer ourselves as a model for you so that you would follow our example. For even while we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, then he's not to eat either. Indeed, we hear that such among you are leading an undisciplined and inappropriate life, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies, meddling in other people's business. And verse 12, now such people we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work quietly and earn their own food and other necessities, supporting themselves instead of depending on the hospitality of others. This is about us doing what we're supposed to do and supporting ourselves and our families and doing the things that we were called to do, whether it's in the workplace, in the ministry, in our walk, and stop minding other people's business and what they ought to be doing and the way they ought to be doing it. Let's not just um, depend on others to do things for us or look at what others are doing. Focus on self. Examine self. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I working hard or am I being lazy? Am I idle? Am I so focused on everyone else that I can't accomplish what I'm supposed to do? He says if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Don't just look for other people to support you. Don't look for other people to do things for you. What you're supposed to do, you are accountable for. And we have to be able to take care of ourselves. Not to say that sometimes people don't need help, but to just rely on and sit back and be lazy and idle so we can focus on other people's and what they need. It's just like with our outreach ministries. There are those that, that need, they need, you know, certain things. All of us need something sometimes, it, it, you know, whether it's physical, financial, whether it's, you know, a listening ear, whatever it is, right? 
People need people for God to operate through so we can help one another. But when someone is just being lazy or slothful and sitting back and not trying to do anything and not trying to work and not trying to help themselves and not trying to do better and just relying on, say, a food pantry or relying on somebody just to hand them something with no change and they have the ability to change, they have the ability to work, they have the ability to do better. He's saying if you don't work, you don't eat. Don't connect with people that are idle and busybodies talking about everybody else but not identifying what they themselves need to be doing and our other verse of scripture is coming from first peter chapter four. First peter chapter four the focus is verse 15 but we're going to read verses 12 through 16 first peter And we're in chapter four. I'm going to look at the King James. And again, the focus is verse 15, but I'm going to read verses 12 through 16. And it began saying, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Verse 16, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. I want to read this in the Amplify for you and break it down because we want to mind our business, right? We don't want to suffer as a busybody, one that's in everybody's business, gossiping and backbiting, slandering, talking about what they ought to do, what they ought to be doing, right? Um, how they ought to be living and we ourselves are not being responsible and disciplined and orderly in our own life as an example to others. So when we look at these verses of scripture, again, I'm, ver I'm beginning at verse 12, right? We should want to share in the sufferings of Christ. This, if somebody talks about us and we're going through something because we're suffering for Christ is one thing. But if we're suffering because we are an evildoer or a busybody in everybody else's business going up beyond the borders, beyond what we should be over across where we ought to be um, looking or talking about or, you know, if we stay in Christ and we're suffering because we're following him, if we're going through something because we are following his example, we ought to be happy about that. But if we're suffering because we're in somebody else's territory, somebody else's business focused on what other people are doing, or we ourselves are disorderly doing evil things, that's something totally different. That does not bring glory to God. So again, verse 12, the Amplified. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you. That is to test the quality of your faith as though something strange or unusual were happening to you. But in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, keep on rejoicing so that when his glory filled with his radiance and splendor is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. If you are insulted and reviled for bearing the name of Christ, you are blessed, happy with life, joy, and comfort in God's salvation regardless of your circumstances. Because the spirit of glory and of God is resting on you and indwelling you. He whom they curse, you glorify. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or any sort of criminal in response to persecution or as a troublesome meddler interfering in affairs of others. But if anyone suffers ill treatment as a Christian because his belief, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God because he is considered worthy to suffer in his name. So when we are counted worthy to suffer in Christ's name or for his sake, even the apostles in the book of Acts, they were rejoicing after they had suffered because they said they rejoiced at being counted worthy 
to suffer for Christ's sake, right? So that's one thing. But when we are going through it, because we talked about somebody lying on somebody, we were in somebody else's business, we were meddling, interfering in the affairs of other people, right? When we allow ourselves to be caught up in that foolishness, that is a line, along the same lines as a murderer, as a thief, and any other evil doing. And so we need to separate ourselves from that and mind our business. Mind your business. Look at what you're supposed to be doing. And in doing that, we will then be setting an example for others because we're focused on being like Christ. So when we focus on Jesus, then we can mind our business, know where we're falling short, what we need to be doing, what needs to be changed in our life, find the word for that, apply it to our life. And now when we walk in that, now we're an example to others and we don't have to talk about them, meddle in their life or their affairs, but they will see through our example, the word of God in action, faith in action, love in action, and us being uh, diligent in the things of God, in working, in serving, in loving, in forgiving, and the things that we ought to do. And so let's look at ourselves and mind our business, right? And so let's apply this today and make sure that we're not gossiping, we're not nosying around meddling. So that means that when other people are gossiping, backbiting, slandering, talking about somebody, meddling in somebody's business, that we refuse to be a part of it. We separate ourselves from them. We turn away from that and we refuse to endure indulge. Amen. So we're going to pray and we're going to pray that God will guide us and lead us and let us be um, those that are ex examining self and minding our own business. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you guide, lead, and direct us today. Help us not to be a busybody, not to meddle in other people's affairs, not to talk about gossip, backbite, or tear down others. But Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord God, Father, to do the things that we were called to do, to be who we were ordained and called and purposed to become. Help us to bring glory to your name to honor you with our life. Help us, Lord God, to be an example to those around us. Freely we give because freely we received. And so, Father, today we commit to you that we will not cross over boundaries and step into other people's affairs. But, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would search our hearts and reveal to us any wickedness, pride, or haughtiness. And help us, Lord God, Father, that we are overcomers and more than conquerors to him that loved us. And we're walking in holiness and godliness as vessels and instruments of righteousness unto you. So we surrender all and we give you all the praise the glory and the honor in jesus name amen god bless you love you to like listen if you are struggling or battling with any type of mental health issues depression anxiety worry fear distress um discontentment anger whatever it is i have a new e-booklet out or ebook out on amazon kindle it is called um spiritual help for mental health I encourage you, if you are willing to put in the work and apply the scriptures and walk in God's word and receive his peace and a sound mind through applying his word, if you're willing to go through 30 days of application of his word and studying and meditating on it and walking in it and then going back and 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 uh, working these principles again and applying these scriptures again and make it a part of your life so that you are part of your own mental sound and healing. I encourage you to get this ebook. The link will be underneath uh, this video and you can simply click on there, watch it on your Kindle um, uh, app as well as listen to it. Um, if you don't have time to read it, you're able to listen to um, the reading of it on your Kindle. So listen, I encourage you, grab it if it's for you or if it's for someone else. It's not a physical book, but it is an electronic digital book that you can uh, read on your Kindle app. So I encourage you, be mentally sound. God bless you, love you to life. I will see you on our next sit-ups. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I'm Tony Brooke Brown. Do not buy my book, Spiritual Help for Mental Health. If you do not want to be a part of your mental healing, if you don't want to experience God's peace and his wholeness and restoration, do not buy my book. But otherwise, check it out. Spiritual Help for Mental Health.